What's going on guys, Clint here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to incorporate GitHub authentication inside your next JS application. And we're gonna do this using the next auth package provided for us by our friends over at Vercel. And what it is is just a serverless authentication service that we can use without having to use any backend or any type of database or anything of that nature. So if you're interested in GitHub authentication and your next JS application, then follow along. So here I am in VS Code and I already started up my development server. I've created a Next.js application with just the create next dash app. And this should be what you see when you spin up your development server. So what I want you to do is go over to next-auth.js.org. This is the Next Auth website. And the first step is gonna to be to install the Next Auth package. So I'm using Yarn, so I'm gonna say Yarn add next-auth. If you're using NPM, it's gonna be the same thing, just NPM I next-auth. So once we have that um, installed, our first step is gonna be to create the, uh, the route inside of our pages folder. So let's go into our pages folder and then inside the API folder, we're gonna create another folder. Make sure you're inside the API folder. This folder is gonna be called auth. And then we need to create a file inside of that auth folder. And that file is gonna be some, open up some brackets here, .js. And inside the brackets, we're gonna be using the spread operator then just next auth, just like that. Make sure you copy that down identically. And over here, if you clicked on the get started, you'll see that this should be, um, this is where we should be, the pages slash API slash auth, and then our file with the brackets.js with the three dots, then next auth inside of those uh, brackets. So since we're actually using GitHub, it gives us the example right here. So what I want you to do is just copy that over exactly. And this should be what you see right here. Now there's, um, Next Auth offers all sorts of providers to use authentication with that integrate seamlessly. There's probably like 20 of them or more, but uh, in this video, we're just gonna be using GitHub. So what we need to do is actually go and obtain our GitHub ID and secret. So what I want you to do is just go over to github.com. I'm gonna open this up just a bit here. Now I'm already signed in. So um, if you're not signed in, go ahead and sign in or sign up if you don't have an account already. And what I want you to do is click on your little profile down here, and then we're gonna come down to the settings tab. Then over here on the left, come all the way down here to developer settings. Then we're gonna click on OAuth apps, which is right here in the middle. And what we wanna do is create a new OAuth app. I'm gonna call this next auth just like that, go ahead and enter. Now for a homepage URL and a development environment, we're just gonna use our local host. So HTTP, colon slash slash, and we're just gonna say localhost 3000. Now it's very important if you push this to production and put it live on the web, you're gonna to wanna to change that URL. And, uh, but you can come back and change this at a later date. So in our authorization callback URL, we're gonna say localhost 3000, oh, I said 300 localhost 3000 slash API slash um, auth, so there it is, slash auth slash callback slash uh, GitHub, just like that, okay? So go ahead and click register application, and this is gonna give you your client ID. Now, don't use my client ID. Uh, in fact, after this video, I'm gonna go ahead and close this application. So make sure you generate your own your own ID and where we want to put these instead of putting these in our next auth file, we actually want to put this in a .env file, which uh, when whenever we build the project and you deploy it, your ID and your secret's not going to be out there for the world to see. So what I want you to do is come over here and at the root level here, make sure at the root level, so just click down here and we're going to create a new file and this is going to be .env just like that. Now, we don't have to use that next public or anything like that for next auth. All we need to do is say GitHub underscore ID, and then we're gonna have a GitHub underscore secret. And we're just copying these um, exactly from right here. So GitHub underscore ID and the GitHub underscore secret. So I've just copied my ID and I'm gonna paste it right in there. Next, we need to get our secret. So let's just Roll down, or sorry, right here, generate a new client secret. Go ahead and click that. And it might ask you to sign in again. So just sign in again if it uh, prompts you to do so. And then let's just copy this client secret. There you go. Now we're gonna need to add um, a couple more things here. 
uh, if we when we push this, if you push it to production, you're going to need a GitHub um, next auth URL. Sorry, a next auth URL. Then also a JSON web token. So let's just go ahead and put that in here. So what I'm going to say here is next auth underscore URL. And since we're in our production environment, or sorry, our development environment, I'm just going to list this as our local host. And please note, you will need to change this when you push this uh, to production. And then we're also going to have a JWT underscore secret, just like that. Now for the secret, there's a few ways you can do this. Um, if you want, you can just say uh, open SSL rand dash base 64. Oh, sorry, I should, I should say 32 there. So open SSL rand base 64, then 32. And what you can do is just copy that right there and paste it in there. Or this may not work for you depending on uh, what you're running. If, you, if that's not gonna work for you, I'm gonna post a link in the description below, but this is it right here. generate secretvercellapp slash 32. And like I said, I'll put this in the description below. So if that open SSL uh, command prompt is not working for you, then just put this in the browser and you can grab a secret right there. It just generates a fresh secret for you every time. And I'll go ahead and use that one in here now. So once we have our ENV file created and all of the secret IDs and tokens all populated, we actually need to restart our server because or we're already closed here. So make sure you restart your server if not already. Otherwise, whenever you use a .env file, uh, if your server server is not restarted, then you're gonna get some errors and it's not gonna work properly. So we're now done with the .env file. So what we need to do next is actually uh, add a session provider. And it's very similar, it's, it's the use context um, the hook in React, but we don't have to go in and create a context. Context, sorry, next auth provides all of that for us. So just scroll down right here, and what we're gonna do is actually go into our app, right? Which is right here. And what we can do here, if you just scroll down, to make this easy, let's just copy this at the top, and we can just import it right here. There we go, right underneath our global styles. And then in here, what I'm gonna do is just copy this return, just like so. We'll just paste it in there just like that. Now we also need to pass in our session like so, okay? So that's gonna be all we need to do inside of our app.js file, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me, so we can go ahead and close that. Now what we're gonna need is actually a login file so we can actually log in. So let's go ahead and open up a uh, side menu here and uh, inside of our, we can close the API folder there. Inside of our pages, we're just gonna create a new page. I'm just gonna say login.jsx. Then RFCE is just gonna get my uh, functional component here. And if you scroll down, you can actually just copy this to make it easy. But what we're gonna need to do, we need to actually import our context here. So we're just gonna say import, it's gonna say use session. Then we're gonna need the sign in. And also the sign should be lowercase here, using camel case. Sign out, and that's gonna be, um, from next auth slash react, okay? And then inside here, just below the login component here, above the return, we'll say const, and we're looking for a data session equal to use session, just like that, okay? And what we wanna do, I'm just gonna copy this down here, and basically it's just an if else statement. I'm just gonna grab this whole return down there. And you can code this out if you want, but this is just gonna make it uh, a little bit easier so we don't draw the video out. So if we go to our application here, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to our login page, we should see this. So very ugly and unstyled, but let's see if this thing works, okay? So what we need to do is, oh, we're getting a no secret here. So what we need to do, I left out a step, a very important step. So let's go into our next auth file here. And right below this array, I'm gonna say secret, just like that. And then process.env, and we're looking for that JWT secret that we put in there. So this is what I just draw in just now. So, uh, and like I said, whenever we make changes to our .env file, it's a wise idea to go ahead and just restart our server.
So here we are, I'm gonna get a refresh, make sure we have no errors. So let's go ahead and click sign in. It's gonna prompt us this page here, sign in with GitHub, and it's gonna ask, do you want to sign in by this application that this person created, which was us? I'm gonna authorize, it says we're now being redirected. And there you have it, you guys, we can now sign in, but there's a few more things we need to do, and I wanna show you. So if we inspect this page here and go into our console, you see how it pulls over our email, our name, and also our GitHub profile ID. So inside of our login uh, page here, because this is where we're at, our login page, right under here, I'm gonna go ahead and console.log our uh, session. And if you look down here, just go ahead and refresh that. If you look down here, this is where it grabs the user dot name or dot email. So just to give you an example here, um, we could say here, I'm gonna put this in a P tag here. We can say, welcome, open up our curly brackets here. And we can say, welcome session dot user name, just like that. And you can see it's gonna pull in my name and we can also use our GitHub profile picture. I'll show you how to do that right here. So I'm gonna use the image. Now this is not the uh, image component from Next.js. And if you want a, uh, if, we, if I ended up doing that, we'd have to, configure the image and that's just not what this video is about. Um, however, if you are interested in that, I do have a video and I'll put a link in the corner up top here. So, but what we wanna say is session .user image, and that's gonna pull in our image. Boom, there you go. I'm just gonna bring this, uh, give it a little style here, right? Just some inline styling. And so let's say uh, width, we'll say uh, some quotes, 75 pixels, just like that. We'll say border, Order radius, uh, order radius, we'll say 50 pixels. Nice and round there. Hey, there you go. So now we have access to these, uh, to these properties from that it pulls over automatically from GitHub. Now, what if we wanted to have a protected route or restricted route that allow, uh, must, uh, you know, made users uh, be authenticated or signed in in order to view that route, which is uh, very common, right? That's the whole reason we do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another page here and I'm gonna call this, sorry, lowercase here, account.jsx. And I'm gonna go ahead and generate my functional component here with RAFCE there. And what we need to do is bring in, we're gonna bring in our use session. And then I'm also gonna bring in that sign out there. This is gonna be from next auth, act, there we go. Now in here, we need to do the same thing. So we're gonna say const data, session, just like that, we'll use session. And what we're gonna do here is a client side uh, rendering here. And next I'll show you the server side rendering. So one of the great uh, tools we can use in Next.js. So what we can say in here is, um, we can go ahead and I'll just do this here. So what we'll say is um, if session's true, then we can say, let's see here. We'll return, return div, say welcome name, okay. Else, say, else we'll return this div. You are not signed. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Now we are uh, authenticated right now. So if we go to the account tech, uh, page, you see it says, welcome, Clint Riley. Now, if we go into this uh, login page and we sign out, now let's try to go back to our account page and it says we are not signed in. So even if we refresh, we're still not signed in. And um, let's go ahead and this is how we can add a sign out functionality on this page. We're gonna do that right here whenever we're signed in. I'm just gonna create a button that says sign out. And this is how easy it is, you guys, in a next auth. I'm really loving next auth. It's really great to you. Very, very beginner friendly. So we're gonna add an on click function here. And inside here, all we have to say, I'm just gonna add a little arrow function here. We just call it the sign out method. Now make sure this has to be uh, imported at the top in order for this to work. Let's go ahead and give a refresh there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the login page. Go ahead and sign in. Yes, sign in. Now let's go to the account page. And now that we're authenticated, boom, says welcome, Clint Briley. Let's go ahead and sign out. 
Now, um, we might not actually even want to see the account page. This you are not signed in, that really doesn't make any sense. We only want to be able to access the account page if you're actually authenticated. So we could do a redirect like this inside of our uh, use session inside the account. What we can say is just required through. Now you'll see it, it's actually automatically going to uh, redirect us. So if we look at our, get rid of this here. We look at our login, you see we're not signed in and we can just go to the account page and this should redirect us the actual uh, callback URL that we're using for GitHub to sign in. So that is a um, that is an option, you know, if we're doing client side rendering. Now I'm going to show you how we can do server side rendering and the way we're going to do that here. Um, what I'm, I'm going to get rid of that there just like that and use, use session. And also what we can use if we open up this, we can say uh, status. And if you hover, if you hover over status, you'll see the uh, it gives us three options, authenticated, loading or unauthenticated. And this is just another way that we can um, check to see if a user is signed in or not. What we could say in here is um, we'll say status. If status is equal to um, quotes here, authenticated, then this should work the same. And let's just go ahead and give it a shot just to make sure. So this isn't gonna redirect us, but it should say we are not signed in. Now, if we try and sign in here, let's go ahead and make sure that this is working properly. If we go to the account page, it should say, welcome our name, perfect. You saw that little flasher and that's because we're doing client side rendering. Now let's try and do a, uh, some server side rendering, which is what we can do in next, um, next JS. So what we wanna say here, uh, at the very bottom here, we are gonna say um, export const, there we go, export const, and we're gonna say uh, get server side props, just like that. And this is gonna be an asynchronous function. So we just say async in there. And it's gonna take in a context, okay? And this is just gonna be an arrow function. And inside here, just like we did above, we're gonna say const session, and then we're gonna say equal to Wait, and then this time we're going to say get session and we're going to pass in context so let's go ahead and we need to import the get session up here at the top oh perfect already did that let's go ahead and refresh so we haven't added our return statement here so what we want to return we're going to say return just like this and we're saying props and inside the props we just want to return session so go ahead and save now let's try this Again, it's going to sign out. And now if we go to the, we just go to the login page and then shoot back over here to account. We're now using uh, server side rendering. So uh, another way to redirect with server side rendering, this is a little uh, something we can use in here. What we can say is if, um, if there's no session, okay, just like that. If there's no session, what we can do is return and we're going to return a re redirect, okay just like that and inside here we can just say destination and then we can give our destination where we want to route our users to if they're not logged in if they're not authenticated and in this case I'm just going to redirect them to the login page and that should already move us so let's go ahead and so here we are at the login page and now I want to change the route to account and this should just shoot us back over to our login page so oh, there it is. In fact, if we just go back over to, it flashed real quick. I'm not even sure if you saw that, but if we try from here, just to make sure we go to our account page, it should now redirect us to the login page and boom, there you go. So there you have you guys. That is how you can include the next auth GitHub authentication inside of your next JS application. I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be putting out some more content just like this here in the near future. Thanks for watching you guys and I'll see you on the next one.